Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Minnesota. And today, let me see if I can find myself. I am gonna, I'm recording this live on a private Facebook group so I can see how my setup is and make sure I'm in screen and all those things. There we go. All right. So this is the beginning of a new series that I'm calling Technique Tuesday. So the first Tuesday of the month, I will post a video much like this. And I will just show you um, a technique that I've been playing with. I have dozens, a couple dozen samples to share with you. And I'll show you how I do the technique and um, ins and outs, things I've learned, what I've tried, what didn't work. I always hesitate to show you what didn't work. But um, I think that's important to show you that a lot of things, uh, not a lot, sometimes things I try don't work. So, um and I think you can learn from, not my mistakes, but from what I do. So I don't know if you can tell the background here. This is the cane weave embossing folder. It's in the mini catalog. This is crumb cake. They're both crumb cake um, cardstock. And this is just plain. I just ran it through. This one, I'm pretty sure that I used a blending brush. Yes. So this I ran through the same crumb cake cardstock, say that fast three times, and then I used a blending brush with crumb cake ink, and it just really brings out that dimension in there, and this is a 3D embossing folder, which just means that um, it's a deeper impression, that's all the 3D means, and you do run it through your machine a little differently. If you don't have a machine and don't have embossing folders, stick with me, I do have two techniques, um, creating backgrounds, just using ink and paper, or ink, let me think, ink and paper, or the other one is your um, trimming, your trimmer, stamp and trimmer, and ink and paper. So stay with me or fast forward to the end if you don't want to go through all my um, embossing folder ideas. So this is the first one. So, um, all right, so there's a few different ways you can add ink to your embossed piece. Um, this one, I embossed and then I just swiped my ink pad on it. Wasn't the look I was going for, but I thought I would show you. So swiping your ink pad on your embossed piece is one idea. Using, let me, I have these all marked in the back. Um, using a blending tool after you, that's not the right one. Using a, sorry, using a blending tool after you emboss, you get a completely different look. So this is swipe. This is a blending tool. You can also use a sponge dauber to add ink. And now I've, I've already run, I thought I was all organized. The other idea is to swipe your ink on your embossing folder, run it through your machine, and this is what you get. So look at those four different, actually we'll add these others. Look at the different looks you can get same ink, same paper, same embossing folder. It's just whether you're using a blending brush, a sponge dauber, and your ink pad. Not that one, I use the same color. Before or after you emboss it. And you just get so many different um, textures and looks. It, it really depends what you're going for. Um, it just, it, it's fascinating to me. So. I really like this one, how it's dark in the background. So I have lots of um, samples and a few that I can play with. So this is Crumb Cake. Again, that's the Cane Weave. And somebody showed me that if you use your embossing, um, I mean emboss it, use your blending brush and tap it on here. Instead of tapping it on your paper and wasting your ink, tap it on in your lid and you'll be able to use that ink for something else. Pick it up with a water painter and color an image, you know, those kinds of things. All right, so let me, I think I should have re-inked this ink pad and you just ink, ink. Actually, you know what? I think I will show you just one side. I'm just going around in circles. I'm giving it quite a bit of pressure. This ink pad is not very juicy. This part I haven't inked at all, and I want you to see the difference. 
hopefully you can see the difference between the inked side and the plain side. So that's just emboss first and then use your blending brush. Um, these are the, I forget, I should have looked up the names, I forget the, um, so I used a sponge dauber on this ink, on this folder. I added ink inside and you add the ink to the side that says Stampin' Up, you add ink to it, then you run your, run it through your machine and you get this kind of effect. I would like to try it with darker ink, um, and see if I can't get that bark to be really dark. So there I played around with some things after. I have not ordered our small blending brushes. These are the original large. I think that will give me some more control to add some ink just to the, the rim there. They are on my next order, so um, stay tuned and you'll see that. The next folder I have is the brick and mortar. And I, I love this one. You might recognize this from last week. I asked what colors I should use, and this was the um, Blackberry Bliss and uh, Shaded Spruce. So there's a, a use for my blended background. Look at that. It looks so much like brick. Now, I believe on this one I inked, I didn't have a note on there, I inked the background and then ran it through and you get the really good definition um, of the bricks. And then you use your blending brush, probably the red one, or orange one. I think I used Cajun Craze on this, and this was um, crumb cake cardstock to really highlight it. Look at those. I, oh, there you can see some of those bricks are so dimensional. And here's a couple cards that I made using the bricks. This one I think opens up this way. Oh, I need a layer on the inside. So let's play around a little. Let's add some early espresso and get those out of the way there we go some early espresso to this is um white and hopefully you can see that it is embossed with the brick and i'm going very lightly you can see how quickly it picks up the ink uh, this is so fun i really enjoyed doing this so watch my socials for the next uh, few weeks um, till I run out of all these samples that I'm showing you. So whether you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, my blog, my newsletter, um, YouTube, those are all the places you will find me. Look at those. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. I think this is beautiful. Isn't that pretty? And I like putting flowers in front of my brick backgrounds. So that was white. Let's see what the difference is with crumb cake. Oh, I don't have it embossed. Not, let me show you that I literally do take my ink pad. This is a foam pad, but it's not the newest version. It, it doesn't have the new... Um, style of case. I'm going to do it in white. Since this one was white, I want you to see the difference. I just have a small piece here that will be a layer in one of my cards. So I like to put the paper on the clean side of the embossing folder so that I'm not messing with the inky side. And I hadn't planned on using my big machine, but big stamp and cut and emboss. This is a 3D embossing folder, so you need the special plate. I'll just line that up and run it through. I planned on showing you some using the little machine, but you can get half price if you join Stampin' Up! during celebration. There it is with the ink to the ink, the, that first. See the difference? No, no, it looks like white brick with brown. I might leave that one. White brick with brown mortar. I could add more dimension with my... Actually, I want to do that. I want to see what that's going to look like. I'm actually going to take ink from here. To clean off your embossing folder, just take it to a sink and run it underwater. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's white paper. You wouldn't know that. So... There is the brick and mortar. Um, I'm going to hold off on this one. 
My table isn't big enough for all this. Okay. This one, I wanted these ferns to be different colors of green, like I was walking through a forest. So I inked my folder with different colors. Um, I think there's some garden green, mossy meadow, and I think this one's really bright, the uh, granny apple. It wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I used darker colors, and that still wasn't the effect. This is more the effect I was going for, and you can see this is actually white. So I embossed it first, and then I used my blending brushes with a variety of greens, which I don't have right now. So let's try something different. How about, so that was blending brushes. This time I'm going to use a sponge dauber. Um, ink, 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 and then I'm very gently trying to catch the raised surface. So um, whatever coloring tools you have, use that. to. Oh, this is pretty, if I do say so. I'm going very lightly, lots of ink, and going very lightly so that my raised portion catches the ink. And I'm going around in circles to get that whole edge. Oh, this is lovely. This would be a good background for either a masculine card or a sympathy card. A little bit of a little bit left and then we'll move on so so far i've only used cardstock isn't that pretty i have to say that one's pretty and that was granny apple green on white and that was embossed first so many options Let me clean this up a little bit all right that was the fern that was another 3d and folder the 3d folders do tend to work best and this one is also a 3d folder this one is the paint texture, I believe. And I used the blending brush on the folder for this one. And my colors were, I always want to know colors, Mary Merlot, Polished Pink, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, and Garden Green. And I put the ink, I took the blending brush right on the folder and added splotches of color. It wasn't as dramatic as I was going for. So for my card, I used similar colors or the same colors, but I embossed first and then I used, let's see if I have a note, a sponge dauber. I, the sponge dauber is smaller than, the top is smaller than my blending brush, or the large blending brush. And I wanted more um, control over, over the colors. The small blending brush might be a better option Again, I'll let you know when I get there, when I get it. So I thought that was a fun birthday card. Use the same colors for my stamp. All right, and next we have the Falling Leaves. This was in last fall's mini catalog, um, but it is still current. So this one I added the colors to the folder with a blending brush, just like I've been doing. Petal Pink, um, Calypso Coral, Mary Merlot, Crumb Cake, and Garden Green. Not quite what I was looking for, but it, it kind of worked. We're going to play around with sponge dabbers. That was blending brushes on the... Um, let's see here. What colors do I want? Let's try a soft suede. I think this is going to be what I was going for. I'm, I ink, ink, ink very gently. Look at the color on that. And then let's switch... green. Ink, 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 and I'm going very gently. I only want to get that ink on that raised portion. And so you can go through. Here I have a red. Last one. I wish I had an orange. Oh, I do have orange. Oh, too hard. This is an old dauber. And finally, we're going to do some orange. Clean up my inks before I get ink everywhere. That was Granny Apple. I do have Calypso Coral. Let's try this one. Ink, ink, ink. Isn't that pretty? That'll be fun for fall. So that is emboss first, color with a sponge dauber. This next one, we're moving right along. Keep, keep my, uh, this 
this area clean for you. I think it's much easier to see what I'm doing if there's not as many distractions. This embossing folder, oh, I can't remember, it's in the annual catalog. Um, I embossed and then I added color with a sponge dauber for this one. This one, I think I... Sponge dog. Use the blending brush on the inside before I embossed it. Um, it was really fun. Again, I think it will be better with a small blending brush. The dauber worked pretty well. I got the colors right where I wanted it. And I do have a card to show you how I finished that off. I just added the butterfly and the sentiment. Layered it on one of the colors. Um, actually, I used Highland Heather. I didn't tell you the colors, did I? Granny Apple Green. Garden Green polished pink and highland heather and then i put it on a um, gorgeous grape and gorgeous grape ink for my sentiment so very simple um and it's a lot of texture so a lot of times you'll hear me say let your pattern paper do the work for you here your embossing is doing the work for you all right i have i have more stay with me how are we doing on time i think we're good i think we're just going to keep going Here's another embossing folder in the annual catalog. You can't really see it, but that's what it looks like if you emboss it and then use um, your, um, I think I used blending brush on this. And the colors here are Flirty Flamingo, Mango Melody, and Grainy Apple Green. I'll do that again real quick. I think you're getting the idea. Actually, there's more I want to show you. But play around with your colors. It'd be fun to do that with the fall. This one, so I learned a lot with the um, fern embossing folder that think about where you want your ink and then you'll get a better, you'll have a better idea of which technique you want to use. So this one I just embossed first. Um, and then I added, I'll let you look at that while I tell you. I embossed first and then I used a sponge dauber to add Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, Daffodil Delight, Melon Mambo, and Highland Heather. And then I went around the outside with Pool Party just to make it look like it was, I don't know, in the sky. That sounds funny. But I do want to try this one with swiping. And I think the only green I have on my table, oh, I have mint macaron. That works. So this is the raised, no, this is the indented portion. So this sinks down on the um, logo side. So if I only want color on the background, get that out of the way, I'm going very gently trying to not get ink inside my, there you can see, I only have ink on the raised portion, which is the background. So my embossing, my embossed um, floral spray there should be white. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I'm going to center this narrow piece on my embossing folder. I'm going to fold it and I'm going to hold it tight because I don't want to, it to move. Again, this is my mini machine available only for new demonstrators. And I have... Where'd they go? Okay. This is, it's very thick. It's not wobbly at all. So I need the one for, use with 3D embossing folders. So I need one and four. One and four. The notes are on, on, on there for me. And then I crank it through, hopefully. Come on. Being temperamental. Hold on just a second. There we go. Now it's beating. It's a mighty machine, but the the roller is so narrow. We've talked about that before if you've watched. There we go. Now, I'm excited to see this. That was Mint Macaron. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Try that in all different colors. Do it in a dark color for a sympathy card. Just add a little bit of gold twine. Isn't that pretty? That was mint macaron with this 
floral spray. This one is also in the mini catalog. I did that here with um, Granny Apple Green. Swipe and a blending brush, and then I embossed it. So you have the color on the um, eucalyptus as well. So that was a fun one. All right. Um, you know what? I don't know how we're doing on time, but bear with me. I want to do one more. I have Tahitian Tide. I'm just going to add ink here. Best if you go flat. The ink does not stain. I've used red on here, and it does not stain. So I'm going to put it up towards the top a little bit. I already have my these here, one and four. Again, that was um, Tahitian Tide. Stay with me, though. I know I, I might be running longer than I had wanted to. I don't have a time. Of course, on video, this doesn't want to work. Come on. Well, that poor little... Um, This isn't working, but I really want you to see it. Don't pull back in my big machine. I have, oh, I did tell you I had two things to show you that don't use the emboss machine. So this was Tahitian Tide. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Very bright. Again, the little bit of ink left on there, just rinse it under running water. Um, I had wanted to show you dots with Orchid Oasis, but that, um, it would be just the same as the last two. So here's my sample that didn't quite work. I did read in a book that you can use a Versamark ink, which is an embossing ink, um, with your, the same technique to ink up your, um, folder, and I just couldn't get it to work. I wanted the... Um, notes to be raised. No, I was trying to ink the background and then I was the whites would the back um, light notes would be white But my ink pad was so juicy. It just embossed the whole thing So I'll, I'll use it for a background somewhere. So here I tried to add embossing fold emboss the embossing ink on the top after I embossed it and thinking that the embossing would stay white like an embossed resist and then my pool party would give me the background and that didn't work either i tried it with gold embossing powder and i did get most of the embossing powder just on my image my raised image but it wasn't enough for me to add the blue with a blending brush or a or a sponge dauber to make it look like a blue background sky so um I'll keep working on that one and when I get it perfected you'll see it in a video or I'll share it in a blog post or something. All right. Um I will show you the two techniques that I um did without the machine and then I saved my favorite for last. So hopefully you're still with me. This one I took a piece of paper and I crumpled it. This is crumb cake. Doesn't it look like leather? I think it looks like full leather and crumple crumple. The first color I swiped on there was um, early espresso. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to stick with crumb cake. So you get the same effect. Again, the ink is only going on the raised portions. So I'm going to crinkle it again. I'm going to concentrate where I don't have ink and see if I can't get some more... Um, ridges there for the ink to catch on and it's ripping that's all right i would use this background for probably a masculine card if you have like a stamp of cowboy boots or um i think i have the whiskey business that would be kind of fun to use for this um any animal you know if you have a bear or a deer or whatever moose stamp that would be kind of fun um so there i'm just adding more ink I think I want more, so I'm going to use some crumb cake ink with 
my dot my um, blending brush to add. So there's a fun way to add texture without a tool. And if I keep going, I would get to that eventually. But I know you get the idea. All right, so that's um, what I would just crink crinkle your paper. Um, I would call that my faux leather technique if I have to name it. All right, the other one I have here, and let me grab a piece of paper. I used my um, trimmer. I am going to take off my cutting blade because I don't want to accidentally cut it. And I embossed this every half inch or quarter inch, sorry, quarter inch. And I'm pushing really hard. You can see I'm going back and forth many times. To start, I am using the dimensions on this side because to put it here, it's just so wobbly. But then once I get it going, I can put it one inch. I'll do one more. I thought it would be kind of fun. Um, an idea for this one is to make a frame. Go a, put maybe two lines all the way around. Here, let's do it in the corner. Rather than talk about it, I'll just show you. So there's a quarter inch, half inch. This is basic white cardstock. I would not use thick because you would never see the... Um, it wouldn't go all the way through, I don't think. I would probably take my time and do it even more. And let's try... Is this blue? It's going to be blue now. I think I used a blending brush on that. You can see the splotches on there. I really want this only on... There we go. There. See, I learned something already. Go back and forth along... Um, perpendicular to your lines. Ah. I like this. This is kind of fun. You could do the um, each of them a different color, each direction a different color. Like I said, I could see going, putting just two lines all the way around to make a frame. Oh, I got a splotch there. I'm getting too excited to show you my last one. So I've only done cardstock. We could do this. I do have a sample that I made out of vellum. So there. That was with Dauber. And your... Um, trimmer with the scoring blade so you don't have to have a machine to do kind of fun techniques with your ink and background my last one is my favorite and it is the seashell embossing folder um it's a, a hybrid because there is a, a die that fits inside her and you actually put it in your embossing folder so you put your paper your cardstock your die and close it in your folder, run it through your machine and it'll die cut your seashells for you. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking, look at this, we are talking about inking your folders. So I'm going to redo this one. This one is shimmer white. I used a blending brush in petal pinks and smoky slate on the large seashells. The smaller ones, I used Sahara Sand, and then I laid it flat, and I swiped it with Pool Party to give me my background, um, and it's on Shimmer White. I think I said that. So this one, I just use blending brushes. The smaller brushes will be better for the smaller seashells, I think. This one is on Bermuda, um, uh, Coastal Cabana cardstock. But I laid my Bermuda Bay ink pad flat on my embossing folder to get this one. So the last one we are going to try, um, I have one more to show you. I did this one this morning. This is the Time Worn Type on vellum, and that's um, soft suede ink. I put ink on here, ran it through with vellum inside, and it took a while to dry. I did have to pat it a little bit, but eventually it dried. And that was for a card I made this morning. So that was kind of fun. I have some designer series paper here somewhere that I was going to show you. But try it with things other than um, 
cardstock. You know, use vellum, use a designer series paper, use a specialty paper. We are going to try vellum. We're going to use a dauber. All right, this is pale papaya. And I'm going to put the pale papaya on with my blending brush on the big one. I'm going to use the same brush. So it may have a little pale papaya on it still, but this is um, uh, petal pink, which I think is a very orange pink. So hopefully you can see. Ink, ink, ink. And I'm trying to keep it on my... Uh, on inside the seashell. All right. Then we have, I have a gray, yep, I have gray granite. And I'm gonna use, hopefully, no, that's green. That one's blue. What's this one? Brown. I think brown is probably closer. Pick up some, I think that's gray granite, right? Oh, Sahara sand. It'll work. So then I'm going to put Sahara sand with the dauber on these smaller shells. I don't know if you can see in there. Maybe if I hold up white behind it, you can see. You know what? Let's go one step further and put some granny apple green. On these larger sea plants it's not working I really need a smaller smaller something to get it in there but you get the idea all right so I tried to get the ink inside in the um, concave I think would be portions now I'm gonna take my mint macaron I'm going to make sure this is nice and flat, and I'm going to rub it. So this is going to color our background. You can already, hopefully you can see that now. Hopefully, I think you can. See, there's different colors on everything. Now, if you remember me ever um, using markers on a stamp, I can see I don't have enough ink in here. There we go. These first ones that I colored with the blending brush and then the um, sponge dauber are probably dry, so I'm going to huff on the whole thing and to re-moisten it. There we go. And then I'm going to put my vellum in here and close it. I do my, need my big machine, but I'm expecting a... I'm very excited about this one. So play around with your papers, play around with your inks, different colors, different color papers, different color inks, your sponge dropper, your blending brush, try before, try after. There's so many, so many options. And so a little bit of time in the day, right? Oh, look at this. On a white piece of paper, you will see that. Isn't that pretty? You see mostly the green on the back, and it is still wet. It's, I'm going to have to let this dry for a while. Not the dramatic effect I was going for, like this one. But you get the idea. So thank you for joining me. Um, again, watch my socials to see the cards and projects I make out of all of these. And let me just throw a whole bunch on here. And um, thank you for joining me. I'm glad you found me. Again, I'm Sue Kramer. Let me know how I can help you um, make better use of the time you have to create. Thanks for joining me. Bye.